Intermediate Algebra Section 1.3 using the addition and multiplication principles to solve equations. We don't have a need for a subtraction principle or a division principle for that matter because subtraction can be regarded as adding opposites and division can be regarded as multiplying by reciprocals. And to illustrate that, in this first problem, I want to get x by itself, and to eliminate the 13, I need to subtract a 13. And as I said, there isn't a subtraction principle, but I can also say that I am adding a negative 13. So I am using a variation of the addition principle. Solving now, the 13s cancel out, leaving x, and I have a negative 35 minus 13, or plus a negative 13. They're both negative, so we can add those numbers together to give us a solution of negative 48. It's always a good idea to check to make sure that your answer is correct. So we would replace the variable with the value that we got and see if 13 plus negative 48 does, in fact, give us a negative 35. And that is the case, so we can be satisfied that we solved this problem correctly. In this next example, we want to solve for y. It's being reduced by 4, to, so to counter that, we'll add 4 to both sides. The 4s cancel out, leaving y, and 16 and 4 leaves us with 20. Again, it's always a good idea to check. 20 minus 4 is 16. We know that we solved it correctly. Here, in these examples, the variable is being multiplied by, and to undo multiplication, we'll divide. We always want to solve for a positive coefficient of 1 on the variable. So to counter a negative, we'll divide by not only a 5, but a negative 5. Here's where we don't have that division principle, but we can think of this as multiplying by 1 over negative 5, the reciprocal, and what I do to one side I need to do to the other side. A negative divided by a negative is positive. A 5 divided by 5 leaves a 1x. That's the goal, always. Positive divided by a negative is a negative, and we end up with a 14. In this next problem, we can solve this one of two ways we can simply multiply by the reciprocal, and that might be the easiest in this case, <clears throat> to eliminate normally a multiplication we divide, but that'll give us a complex fraction. Instead, consider multiplying by 9 fifths on both sides. 9 times 5 over 5 times 9 cancel out, or simply 9 divided by 9 is 1, 5 divided by 5 is 1, leaving an x. The 45 has a denominator of 1, and instead of taking 45 times 9 and di then dividing by 5, instead, factoring out a common 5, 45 divided by 5 is 9, 5 divided by 5 is 1, leaving in the numerator a 9 times 9 is 81 over 1, or just 81. The other approach to this would be, let me write it again, we have 5 ninths x equals 45. Eliminate the fraction by multiplying both sides by 9, so that this 9 over 1 cancels out the 9 in the denominator, leaving a 5x, and I'm going to leave this 45 times 9 for a moment. Then, last step to get x by itself, or to have a coefficient of 1, we'll divide both sides by 5, and this should look familiar. 5 divided by 5 leaves x. The 45 times 9 divided by 5 that we just saw a minute ago results in an 81. So it's your choice. Two steps to eliminate and solve for the variable, or all in one step by multiplying by the reciprocal. In this last example, we need to work our way essentially back through the order of operations to get to the variable. And the first thing before we worry about the 2 on the x is to eliminate that minus 3. 
We'll use the addition principle by adding 3 to both sides. The minus 3 plus 3 cancel out, leaving 2x. 7 plus 3 is 10. And now, the only thing that's happening to the variable is multiplication. We'll divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times x is 1x. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. And again, it's always a good idea to verify that you have the correct solution. So plugging in a 5 in place of x, we have 2 times 5, which would be 10 minus 3, does in fact give us 7. So we can be satisfied that we solved this correctly.